you guys have learned about gradients, midpoints, and distance, and just change it around a bit and use it in a different way. Um, so we're going to start just with a little warm up. Let's calculate the midpoints of these two questions. Okay, I'm going to leave you for about two minutes to do that. Don't put answers in the chat yet. I'll call for answers at about seven minutes past six. And then you can do uh, it, then you can put them in the chat, but just hold them for now. Okay, so both of these questions ask you to calculate the midpoint. So off you go. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Right. Are we ready? Pop your answer in the chat to question one if you have your answer. What is the midpoint of point A and B? Eight and six is Kloklo and Monica and Siamo agrees. So to do our midpoint, we go 10 plus six divided by two and eight plus four divided by two. So our midpoint is going to be eight and six. Well done, everybody. Good job. And let's do question two. What is the midpoint for C and D? Pop it in the chat. And come on, guys. It's about 44 of us. I want to see 44 answers here. Even if your answer has been uh, shared already, just um, participate by popping it in the chat. It's all a bit about participation. <laughs> well done, well done, Miss Coco. They got the answer right. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go 2 plus 8 divided by 2, and then 6 plus 2 divided by 2, and that gives us the coordinates for the midpoint, which is 5 and 4. Okay, well done, everybody. Okay, so that was just a little warm-up to get us thinking again about the midpoint and how to calculate it. So now we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to say... Here's point A, and the coordinates are negative 3 and 2. And here's point B. Don't know what those coordinates are, but we do know that the midpoint coordinates are 2 and negative 1. And now we need to figure out what the coordinates of B are. Does anyone want to volunteer a plan? How should we do this? Okay, Monica. <laughs> Monica, I thought you you playing netball this holiday. No, I have practice during the day. <laughs> oh, shame. <laughs> okay, Monica, what ideas have you got? Um, then I was thinking 
um, we use the same formula as the midpoint. But yes. instead of adding the two coordinates, maybe minus the two coordinates from each other, like x1 minus x2. Okay. You're saying we should maybe minus. Okay. Right. Let's hear if anyone's got any other ideas. Any other ideas how we can solve this since we have the midpoint and we now need the coordinates of this other point? How can we do it? Yes, sorry, Kunta. Hello. What I think is that we can equate uh, the midpoint and make an equation and solve it out. Nice. Make an equation. I like that idea. Good. Yeah. And let's hear from one more. Siomo, you also have some ideas. Do you want to share with us? You just said, could we add instead? So I'm not sure what that means. Can you tell us? I think, Tristan, part of what we, at some point, we are going to times by two. I think you're right. Has two home gone away? All right. Okay, guys, I like all of those ideas, and I think that all going to work. So basically what we've got are the coordinates of the midpoint. Okay, so the midpoint is m and it's 2 and minus 1. So for this part here, for the x coordinates, for this here, let me just find my highlighter, for this here, we have the 2. So uh, Orika Miso also said, let's make an equation. That's a good idea because we can say that if we use the formula and we take the two x coordinates and divide it by two, we know what that's going to be. That's going to be two. Now, what can I substitute in that I already have? Well, we have a negative three here. So negative three plus this x coordinate at b, and I'm going to call it xb divided by two is two. Okay. Now I want everyone to try uh, to not try, but actually just go ahead and solve that. What is the x coordinate at b? Let's solve that equation quickly. We, there where you are at home, just solve it. And put your answer in the chat as soon as you have an answer for that x coordinate. It was like seven, one, <laughs> a little question mark at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a few people are saying it's seven. So let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, so if you got a little bit stuck on how to solve the equation, we're going to times by two to get rid of that two. So that's going to give me four. And then I take that over and that gives me seven. Okay, so good stuff. And now I've helped you with the X. I want you to do the Y on your own. So the y coordinates, uh, let's use a different color over here. And now solve for the y coordinate at b on your own. Clocklaw's already got an answer. I'm not saying anything. Let's see if other people can also get an answer for that. <clears throat>
Put your answers in the chat. I think there's a few people who made a mistake. Maybe made the mistake of just repeating someone else's answer. <laughs> okay, so the Y coordinate that we have is two. The one that we are looking for is the y coordinates at b, and that is equal to minus one. So we know that the midpoint coordinate is minus one. We are going to times by two on both sides. And then we are going to subtract two on both sides. And there we go. It's minus four. So quite a few of you said two. I'm not sure how you got the two, uh, but the correct answer should be minus four. Okay. Right. But that's basically the gist of it. So if we have the midpoint, then we can find the coordinates of another point. As long as there are two points for which we have the coordinates, we can find the coordinates of the third point. Okay. Um, right, let's see. That's the midpoint. Now let's see what we can do with the distance. So let's have a look at this question. I'm giving you 30 seconds just to look at it and to see what it is saying. It says determine x if AB is root is three root five. Okay, and again, I would like to hear some suggestions. What are we going to do to solve this? Some other people, Monica's had a turn, or Kaniso has also said what she was going to suggest. Let's hear from some other people. What are you what are you thinking? How are we going to solve this? Maybe from Shiraz or from Sibunga Musa or Masood. Who's got an idea? What can we do? Shiraz is same as last question. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it can't be the same because the previous question was a midpoint question. So Shiraz, I think you need to come on here and explain what you think. <laughs> yeah, what information do we have? What are we trying to solve for? So you almost says form an equation. Yeah, um, but using what? Who's and I forgot the, the, the distance equation. Uh, so I, I really can't remember this again. Okay, but we're going to use the distance formula. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so what have we been given? Can we do the same thing that we did last time. That's right. Well done. We have been given the distance. What do we not have? What is missing? A coordinate.
Can we make an equation? Yes, we can make an equation because we can use the distance formula to make that equation. Okay, so not a train smash if you forgot the distance formula. So our length here is AB. So the distance formula, and by the way, grade 10, you must know the distance formula because in grade 10, you don't get a formula sheet um, in your exams. You must remember the formulas yourself. It's only in grade 11 that you get a formula sheet. Okay, so it's a long story. It's x, x2 minus x1, but you basically subtract the x coordinates and you subtract the y coordinates. Ms. Coco taught you this last week as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's now substitute in what we have. We have the distance, which is 3 root 5. And into our equation, if we make this x1 and x2, then this is 4 minus x squared. Okay, so that's the one that we are going to solve for. If we sub in our y value, so then this is y1 and this is y2, remember they must follow the same order. The order is very important. Um, you can change x2, x1 and x2 around. So you could have said that the point at b is x1 and that one is x2 as long as your y's then follow the same order. 99% of mistakes come in because of that, um, messing up the order. Okay, but anyway, so that's one minus four squared. Okay, now I am not a fan of these roots. They make my brain hurt. So I'm gonna get rid of them straight away by squaring both sides. Now, you don't have to do this without a calculator, but squaring a three root five shouldn't be too much of a, a problem. But if it is, if you can't do it in your head, then just do it on your calculator. Root uh, three root five squared is 45. And then here we have four minus x squared plus and I'm going to simplify this. One minus four is minus three squared. Okay. Can I get a thumbs up in the chat just to see that everyone is following and is aware of what is going on? If you're not sure, you must ask a question. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get this out the way here with the uh, uh, minus three squared. So that's nine. And let's subtract it on both sides. So 45 minus nine is going to be 36. Okay. So we have 36 and four minus x squared. Now there are two ways that you can do this. You can square out this bracket and then eventually you will get a trinomial that you have to factorize and you have to solve for x. Or you can now again, just take a square root on both sides like this. Because if you take a square root on both sides, 36, you can square root quite nicely. That's going to be 6. And then the square root will be gone here as well. But you got to remember, if you are taking a square root of the 36, it can be positive or negative. So you can have a positive 6 as an answer, or you can have a negative 6 as an answer. So you must just always keep that in mind. Otherwise, you're going to be one solution short here. Okay. And then we're going to solve for x. Um, if it's equal to, if this side is equal to 6. Um, so we subtract 4 on both sides. That's 2 is equal to minus x. And then x is minus 2. 
And then on this side, we do the same. We take the four over and then X is 10. Okay, so X can be minus two or X can be 10. Right, and that's it. Okay, so when given the distance, we can use the distance formula, make an equation, solve for x. But we are going to get two values for x because we are working with square roots and quadratics and all of that stuff. Okay, let's see again another thumbs up in the chat. How are we doing with this? Put a thumbs up if you're happy. We are going to do another one just now. Are you going to work a bit more on your own? Okay, good stuff. Right, let's do this first one. Okay, so we have the length of CD is five. Find the missing coordinate of CD. If C has those coordinates and D has those coordinates, but the X coordinate is unknown. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave you alone for about three minutes just so that you can get started with this question. Let's see if you can solve for X. Buchle, if you are not happy about something, please ask a question. You can raise your hand or you can pop it in the chat or you can send it over to Miss Coco. <laughs> I'll scroll up a little bit so that you can see. Um, let me do this. Move that up, and then you can see the distance formula as well. Every should, everything should be in the screen. I wonder. Still working. <laughs> okay. Well, carry on. I'm going to start so long as well, just so that we can get going. So let's start by writing down what we've got, which is CD. And we're going to use the distance formula because the distance, the length, is given. OK, as soon as you've got an answer, guys, uh, pop it in the chat. Eh? Let us know. We can substitute in what we have. So it's six minus x squared minus two minus two squared. And then to make things easier here, you can square those square roots away. Remember, Bofello, you need two answers for x because we are working with all of these quadratics here. So there must be two answers for x. So 6 minus x squared. And here we've got minus 4 squared. <laughs> Emmanuel, I like how everyone always adds a little, I think, a little question mark at the end. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Okay, so here we've got uh, 16, which we're going to subtract on both sides. So we get 9. Okay, and then we are going to square root again on both sides. So we're either going to get negative 3 as an answer, or we're going to get positive 3 because the square root of 9 is positive or negative. And those of you who are getting three and nine, I have a feeling that you're right. Minus six is minus X. So wait, 
that's wrong. <laughs> Minus nine. So now x is nine. And on this side, we're going to subtract a six. So it will be minus three. And then x is three. Well done. Well, oh, you know, my pen just got, went crazy. So excited that people are getting the sun right. <laughs> Trying to draw a smiley face and it just went crazy. <laughs> anyway, there it is. Smiley face for all of you. Well done. Okay. <laughs> if you want to um, take a quick screenshot of um, this next question, it's question B, not question A, question B. Um, if you want to try it at home, uh, you can take a quick screenshot of that and give it a go um, at home. But we are going to move on because we are starting to run out of time again. Yes, Tiamu, that's exactly it. The square root numbers, that's why we get the two answers. That's exactly it. There must be two answers. If you just square root the nine and you forget that it can be positive or negative, you actually throw another solution away. So make sure that you can do that. Okay. So let's see one more. Um, should be slightly easier, but I don't know. Let's see. This class is up for a challenge though, so that's amazing. We've got the gradient between point uh, D, nine and negative seven, and point E, X and negative one, is equal to negative one. Determine the value of X. So I'm gonna do this first one with you again. So you guys saw now what we did with the midpoint. You saw what we did with the distance. So here we are given the gradient. So which formula do you think we're going to use to solve for the missing coordinate? We're going to use the gradient formula. We're going to substitute it into the gradient formula and we're going to solve for x. Okay, I think you guys are starting to get the hang of it, which is excellent. Okay, what color do I want to write? And let's do read. Okay, so we have point D and point E and the gradient is equal to minus one. So as always, gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, we have the value of the gradient, that's minus 1. And we can say minus 7 minus minus 1 over 9 minus x. So we're just substituting in, and now we've got an equation that we need to solve. So and I'm just going to carry on on this side. So I've got minus 1. I'm just going to simplify a few things here. So minus 7 minus minus 1 is minus 6 over 9 minus x. And here we can now times by 9 minus x. If I times by 9 minus x, on the right hand side, I must do so on the left hand side as well, nine minus x. And if I do that on this side, nine minus x, then that cancels out. So I'm only left with a minus six. Put that minus into the bracket, that gives me minus nine plus x is minus six. And I'm gonna take the minus nine over to the other side and add it minus nine, uh, plus nine on both sides. So minus six plus nine is three. Okay, I think this one is probably a little bit easier than all of that squaring and square root and what we just did with the distance. So yeah, can I see, just put a um, thumbs up in the chat if you understand this question we just did with the gradient. Thumbs up. And if you're not sure, questions, 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 so that we can clarify. Nice. Okay, so now you are ready to work on your own. Let's do question 2.2. On your own, solve for that missing y coordinate using the gradient. Okay. I'm going to check back in in about three minutes. So don't put answers. 
up yet. Let's just see how it goes first. Three minutes, let's see if we can do it in three minutes. Right, everybody, pop your answer in the chat if you've got it. Forty-seven over five. Minus five. Negative five. Asunda says negative five. Okay, I'm going to start making our equation. Our gradient is five, and we're going to go ten minus y over eight minus five. And that gives me 5 is 10 minus y over 3. And I'm going to times by 3 on both sides. So I get 15 is 10 minus y. And I take the 10 over. That gives me 5 is equal to minus y and then y is minus 5. Well done, guys. Lots of you got that. Excellent. Uh, let's do one more, one more question, 2.3. I'm going to give you another two minutes for this one and <laughs> over three. Yes, it must be over three. Well done. <laughs> Two minutes for this last one.
You already were turbines are giving some answers here. Well done, everybody. <laughs> so our gradient is negative four. So we go six minus two over x minus zero. And then that is four over x. And we cross multiply, we get negative x is four. So x is minus four. That's it. Well done. Okay, excellent, guys. So